Welcome to Oxford Scugog Life. I'm your host, Jackie Hermans. So, um, I hope you had a great weekend. And depending on when you're watching the show, I hope you're having a fabulous week. Now, just in case you don't know, I do yoga. And you can register at any time for my yoga classes. And I also do one-on-one -on -one channeled readings. And I am at Today's Natural Solutions on Saturdays is that health food store across from Zayers in Uxbridge. I'm there from 1 to 4, normally doing readings, and you can book that ahead of time. I had to give myself a plug, right? All right, so what is on the show for today? We're meeting with Willie Pop, talking about the Santa Claus Parade and what that is going to look like this, uh, this year. We are also meeting with Kumon, talking about how students can finally get back on track. Maybe they lost their steam when there was online learning. So how to get back on track and get those grades that they've been looking for. And we're also talking about the veterans, the Honor Our Veterans Banner Program. It is going to be a fabulous show. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of the show for a beautiful contest we're having. You can win. So we'll be right back with more on Oxford School Gog Live. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. It isn't the heavy trays that make the job difficult or the fast pace you need to keep up. It's not working another double because someone called in sick. What makes the job tough is the moment you realize a customer has had enough and you have to make that decision not to overserve. Refusing service isn't personal, it's the law. We know it's not easy, but we're counting on you to keep us all safe. Thank you, servers, for doing the tough job. Hi, I'm Constable Daryl Rice, Durham Regional Police Service. Tune into Rogers Cable 10 to watch me on Seniors Talk with DRPS but we'll talk about all kinds of amazing information and community programs for you, our seniors in Durham Region. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. So now with me is Councillor and Deputy Mayor of, uh, of Oxbridge, Willie Pop. Willie, how are you? I'm doing very well, Jackie. How are you today? Good. My dogs were excited to meet with you as well. They needed to congregate for this interview. <laughs> it's always nice to see members of the fur family around. Yeah. <laughs> so we have something exciting to talk about. The Santa Claus Parade is happening this year. Isn't that great? We're finally getting back to it. Yeah, it's the 60th anniversary this year, so we're very excited about it. That is awesome. Okay, what's the date? So the date is November the 20th, 11 a.m. And uh, so our residents, people that want to come to town, want to see the parade, they just get out there a little bit in advance because the street will be closing. Uh, it starts at Center Street and Brock and goes as far up as just up to the, uh, the high school on the opposite end at, at the east end. Okay, beautiful. So are there going to be any differences this year? Are you recommending people even wear masks? What would you like Absolutely. To yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I cut in on you there. We are definitely looking to, uh, you know, social distance as best we can. Uh, we're asking that they wear masks. There are, you know, obviously with everything that's still going on in this world, it's great that we're finally able to have a parade, but we still have to, you know, keep, uh, you know, be, be wary of that little thing called COVID that's out there and do what we can. We're asking that if you are going to come out and watch it, that you do wear a mask and do your best to social distance. Okay, wonderful. So, um, any highlights as to who's going to be in the parade this year? Anyone, anything you want to share? Sure, love to. Uh, we have lots going on, actually. Uh, there are some that are looking to give back to the community that are going out there. So, check this out. We've got the North Durham Warriors, an eight-year-old hockey team that is going to go out, and they're asking if you are coming out, uh, if you could help the, uh, the Christmas drive for kids 
and you've got an unwrapped toy that you could provide that to them along the way. We also have the fire department that's going to be out there doing their boot drive. Uh, they bring walk along with their boots. If somebody can drop in a little bit of change or you know a dollar or two along the way, they give back to the charities that way too. The Shriners are always a favorite, right? So we've got they're coming along and they do their little dance. You know how they do the dance along the way. Yeah. So there's going to be stuff, yeah. So there, there's there's you know long and short of it is there is a lot going on and we're really excited about it. Council's going to be participating. Representatives, our MPP, our MPP will both be in attendance. We've got schools that are coming out and doing some things. We've got a new business called Kids Pop that runs a, an indoor playground in town. And they're going to be doing some stuff too with regards to a, a horse and wagon. So as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty passionate and excited about it. It's something that we've missed for a, over a year. You know, we missed last year because of the pandemic. And we want to get rolling on it again. Nice. Now, I, I assume Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus will be making an appearance? Well, there's only allowed to be, yeah, as we know, there is only one true Mr. and Mrs. Claus, right? So we have asked all of, uh, you know, all of our other booths, floats, uh, participants, walking, riding, whatever it is they're doing, they can't emulate Santa so or Mrs. Claus. And they will be the guests of honor at the end uh, on with on our new newly revised sleigh and reindeer. So we're, we're really excited about that. Very cool. So is there still an opportunity if anyone wants to participate? Are you taking any more additions? We would love to have more additions. The more the merrier. We're trying to make this year bigger, bolder, better. You can check out the township website at, you know, at uxbridge.ca. Go to the Santa Claus Parade. There now there's many things you can do, Jackie. If you wanted to come out and volunteer, there's a way you can apply for that. If you wanted to, you know, if you're a service group, uh, a senior home, uh, you wanted to come out and do a float and decorate up your, you know, all we ask is that you decorate and be in the Chris in the holiday cheer type of mode. Uh, you're able to do that as well. We're still accepting applications that way. Go to the uxbridge.ca website, Santa Claus Parade, and there's uh, forums that you can do to get to us, and we'd be happy to have you. Is there a cost to participate in it? To have no, no cost at all. We've got great sponsors that are helping out. Uh, the Cosmos and the BIA stepped up immediately. We're receiving incredible donations from residents, and we've got local businesses that have contributed as well. So we're having a very solid year with regards to support. I think it's a, it, it demonstrates that, you know, Uxbridge is always a very giving community as it is. But we've missed being able to do things that have been, you know, this has been a 60 year, this is our 60th anniversary, and we missed one last year because of this. Everybody wants to get back to normal, and I think this is a good step to doing so as long as we, as long as we do it safely. Now, have you heard if any businesses along Brock Street will be doing anything special on the day of the parade? Well, I think there are some that are, I mean, right now we're in Remembrance Day mode, so many have decorated up their, their spaces that way, and I apologize if this is being played at a time that might cause a, this to be uh, wrongly said, but there will be businesses for sure that'll be doing some form of, uh, of decorating. The holiday trail is coming soon after that from a tourism perspective, and we've got, obviously have the Optimus Fantasy of Lights. There's a lot going on along the holiday season for us. So you can bet that those businesses will be doing what they can. Okay. I have never been involved with a holiday trail. Can you just briefly tell me what that's about? So this started last year through uh, Discover Uxbridge. And what we had that way was we actually had Santa and Mrs. Claus in one of the businesses windows. People could come out, especially last year when we were social distancing, it was tough to get people out to do things, right? So we had them do that. Uh, we also had the Nutcracker took place in another business. So if you came out in the at, at night, you could come out, see some things that were going on within the downtown, which would give you a little bit of entertainment along with what's going on. Okay, beautiful. Willie Pop, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you can join us on the show. We, we, we will be right back with more on Oxford Scugog Live. We fought our way through Italy and then headed for Amsterdam, sweeping for Germans along the way. Our worst fear was to catch a bullet in these last hours of the war. 
I was 15 when the Nazis invaded the Netherlands. More than 100,000 Dutch Jews never came home. Our men were put into forced labor. By 1945, we were starving. The food drops gave us hope. And then, the Canadians came. Before Amsterdam, I couldn't have explained why we were there, all those years away from home. But the Dutch showed us why it mattered. Papa wanted me to bring some soldiers home to thank them personally. And that's when I first saw Wilf. And I invited him over that afternoon. Marguerite Blaise married Lieutenant Wilf Gildersleeve. They moved to Vancouver, where they raised eight children. Today, the Dutch still remember the Canadians who liberated them. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. So I have Tish McDonald on, on I was going to say on the phone, but uh, you're not. You're on, you're on Zoom. Uh, who is the program director of the Honor Our Veterans Banner Program, and she has a very special guest with her. I'm very excited to have Jim Parks. And uh, Jim served in World War II. He landed on Juneau Beach on D-Day. And he was, you were in Northwest Europe during World War II. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. It is such an honor to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Tish, thank you for all that you do. You have started a fabulous program, and we see these banners all over Uxbridge honoring mm -hmm. our veterans. And we're going to be playing a video in the background here just so you can see the amazing work that's being done to honor our veterans. So, so Tish, thank you so much. Oh, I'm delighted to be part of a, a collection, a committee that is willing to put forth the effort to honor our veterans because it's just so important. We're actually the third program in Canada. Um, I saw in St. George, New Brunswick, a little newspaper article about this big, about them doing this little banner program. And I thought, we need to do that here. I'm somebody in the community that's been involved in remembrance activities, both in the schools and in the community for years now. And as soon as I saw that, plus some other banner programs that were in the northern, northern um, New England states, I thought, no, we really need to do that here. I knew we would be embrace it wholeheartedly as a community. So beautiful. So how long ago did you start the program? This is our seventh year, actually. Okay. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's grown every year. We're up to 245 banners, which is remarkable. I think it's the biggest program in the country. It must be, yeah. I've, I've done a little digging to see if some other people are, are catching up to us. And, you know, it's great that there's so many places around the country that are also adopting the program. Beautiful. Now, before we started the interview, I was talking about how my grandfather served. And I never thought about approaching you about the banner program because I thought, well, I didn't grow up in Uxbridge and my grandfather didn't grow up in Uxbridge. But that doesn't matter for this program, does it? No, it doesn't. There just has to be a connection to Uxbridge. So for Jim, for example, Jim is somebody that's been part of our program. He's new this year for our banner program, but he's kind of been part of our veterans outreach group for the last number of years. So he is connected to us, even though he lives just outside of town. So he's part of our program as well. Okay. So how do you, how can you get a banner started for, uh, for one of your family members? What needs we, just, we have an application process this year. We actually went digital with it. Um, so there's just an application process where people have to submit a little bit of information enough to put on the banner. They need to be able to submit a photo um, and then we'll work with them. Our committee member, Phil um, Carmichael, does all our graphics and he'll work with the, the, per the family members just to get um, the image the way that they want it, the wording the way that they want it. And then he'll create the banner for them. Um, there is a cost. Uh, it's This year it was $197.50 for each of the banners. And then there's a renewal every couple of years after that. Okay, and the renewal is important, right? Because the the banner will weather, and mm. uh, it also costs to to get them put up and get them taken down yep. and store them. So exactly, exactly. And you know, nobody has objected at all. They know what the initial cost is. They're actually surprised at how low the cost is. And then there's never any balking about the renewal. They just know that's the the part. It's just 
It just has to be done, right? It, just, it costs money to do things. So right. there's never any objection whatsoever. Now, Jim, how do you feel about the program? What is the importance to you? Well, actually, it's, uh, what it does is bring you uh, people hear names and they read stories. But when you actually see a banner, you actually see a soldier and you actually see a veteran and it's got his name up there and you see him the way he was in World War II. If it's World War II, if it's a mostly World War II, right? This World War I. Yes, well. it's, yeah, World War I and World War II. You see exactly the way he was at the time. It's a very good program. And I was, uh, when I first saw myself there, I said, oh my God, I said, I better, that's a good picture. I wonder where they got it from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? When I look at the banners, everyone just looks so young. Mm -hmm. it, it, when, I, when I look at that, I think, wow, you were too young to be in a, in a war. Like what, what um, everyone has gone through. It's just, uh, it's unbelievable. It, it, it's unbelievable. And that's why we need to, to, to remember and to honor there's a lot of trauma that has happened for the benefit of our country, which is for the world. Well, and when you mentioned the age too, Jim was only 15 when he enlisted, right? Landed, up, landed on the shores of, Germ uh, shores of Normandy at 19. That's right. Yeah. Uh, were you even allowed to enlist at age 15? Well, it's a, it was a way of the world at the time. Right? Most of the young guys, it's a, it's just outbreak of war and it, uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the soldiers that were doing the enlisting were all World War I veterans and some were, were just starting World War II. And, and the, uh, that happened a lot in World War I, guys joining, uh, joining young. So the, uh, I, what happened is I belonged to reserve and in, in the reserve, they took the nominal road. He didn't look at your age and he gave a selective service certificate. You had to be 18 to have a certificate. They didn't look at our age. They just gave us a certificate. So I joined up. They said, have you got any proof of age? I said, here's my certificate. They didn't. Uh, so it was automatic. They said, oh, the guy said, you got to be 18 to get to have one of those. They gave me a wink. He took it. Yeah. Wow. So I look at the pictures that uh, they were of the, uh, you wouldn't fool anybody, all the young kids. Yeah. 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 Well, thank, I want to thank both of you for coming on the show. Thank you for all that you do. And we will direct people. Can you just quickly say your website so people can um, can apply for those banners? Honor our veterans banner program .ca. And then we also have a Facebook page. And I'll also advertise in print media as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you to both of you. We will be right back with more on Oxford School God Life. doesn't have to be a life sentence. Join me each week on Health 180 with Carrie and Fenn as we talk with doctors and other experts about how to reset your life after an illness. Learn health and wellness tips, patient stories, advice, and solutions from professionals on how to be the best you. Together we are stronger. That's Health 180 with Carrie and Fenn right here on Rogers TV. Scugog Life. So now with me on the show is Tammy Friesen from Kuma. So Tammy, oh, you know what? I want to make sure I have the full name properly, uh, proper. Kuma Math and Reading Center, correct? Of Uxbridge, yes. Of Uxbridge. Okay, beautiful. And you guys are located right on Brock Street still? Yes. Yes, beautiful. So Tammy, thank you so much for coming on the show. We, we wanted to talk to you because We've heard that 
the online learning that was going on last year, for some students, it worked really well. For other students, it, they had they were really struggling. Absolutely. And so with some of those students who were struggling last year with online, um, they feel behind this year because the information that they were trying to take in last year in a way that didn't work best for them hadn't really sunk in. So they feel like they're maybe a year behind, a year behind in math, a year behind in English, to, you know, whatever subjects. And so we would love to have whatever strategies that you could share with parents and students of how they could maybe feel like they can catch up, feel like they can get more comfortable. Um, um, I, I'm going to send it over to you. I'm going to stop talking and allow you to, <laughs> to bring these to the table. All right. Well, my first first thing to say to parents is and to the students don't stress that's um everybody is in the same boat right now all across the world so for students that are feeling like they're behind and they're getting their first uh performance re or performance review or report card from their teachers and the teachers are saying yeah you're really behind or you've missed a whole year i would say take heart they're young and we all have a lifetime of learning. So stress does not work. That just stress causes us to stop, stop learning anything. Other than that, I would say get to the basics. So if your child is struggling with reading, um, of course they have to do with the school, what they're getting from school, but at home when they're, um, you know, reading at bedtime or doing any of their homework, get back to what is what they know, because we can only start to learn at the level that we already know. So if you're trying to teach them in algebra, but you can't add or subtract or you don't know your multiplication tables, we need to get back to the multiplication tables so that then they're able to and 10, 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. Um, and reading a little bit every day. Not um, One of the mistakes that I had made with my son was I told him, you need to read a chapter a day. And after about a week or two of me being controlling and forcing him to read a chapter a day, he said to me, some of those chapters are 35 pages, and then the next chapter's two pages. So then I revised and said, 15 minutes. Read for 15 minutes, pick up where you left off the next day. And those are, those are small things that you can do at home, but mostly the stress. Mostly the stress is just try to live, alleviate that and communicate with the teachers. We are doing as much as we possibly can to maintain continual learning, but also encouraging and feeling like there is hope. I love that. So if they are feeling stressed in the school environment, the last thing that parents should be doing is creating stress in the home environment. Exactly. You know, that controlling and forcing. So finding, um, finding just like you did, you know, you found the perfect match that will work for your child, which is like the 15 minutes a day. Right. So I really like that. Now I understand you have programs too. So uh, they can, you know, there's an opportunity for students to come and get extra help right at your center. Do you want to, can you briefly describe the types of programs that you have available? Yeah, so we have a math and a reading program. Our math program is, is that. It's um, math from all from age three years right up through high school. And our reading program is considered a comprehension based program. However, it does include written work and um, like punctuation, spelling, capitalization, all of those basics, but with a co comprehension as our main, um, main importance. Um, and students come in, the first step would be to um, give me a shout and we set up an assessment to see where the student is comfortable learning. So everything is based on that comfortable learning point where they're able to actually independently do their work, like look at the work and say, okay, I know how to add two plus two and do that within a matter, in a reasonable amount of time. And what age do you work with or up until what grade? Up until grade 12, I have students who are in grade 12, but students that are also in grade three. So they can, um, they can be, students come to me for remedial or just to stay above and be advanced. 
So there's all types of, all ages in the center at any given time, all working at their um, prescribed program for them specifically. So it's very independent Beautiful. in that way. Now, what is your website to share with everyone? The website is www.kuban.ca or better to email me if they want to talk to me personally at uxbridge underscore on at ikuman.com. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Tammy. I'm, it was such a pleasure to meet with you. And uh, thank you for all the work that you're doing in the community. Thank we you. We'll be back with more. Thanks, Tammy. Sorry. We'll be right back with more on Oxbridge School God Life. Everybody knows not to drink and drive, but some people still think it's okay to take drugs and drive. Police have the authority, the ability, and the tools to determine if drivers are impaired by legal or illegal drugs. And because drug impaired drivers can pose just as great a risk as drunk drivers, they face the same penalties, like the loss of their driver's license, a criminal record, fines, and more. A message from the RCMP, the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police, and Arrive Alive Drive Sober. Hi, I'm Sean Lackey and this is Sold with Sean Lackey. You should check us out if you want to find out what's going on in the world of real estate. We'll have all sorts of guests to keep you in the loop on what's going on in this wonderful world. I'm Deborah Hutchison, host of Talk Politics. Each week we speak one-on-one -on -one with your elected officials at all levels of government about the issues that affect us all. Keep informed. That's Talk Politics each week right here on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. I want to take the time to thank our guests for coming on the show. It was wonderful to meet all of them, providing us all that beautiful information. Now, have you heard of the amazing Oshawa Generals? They were founded in 1937, and that is damn good hockey. Would you like to win some tickets? Do you know the last time that they have won the Memorial Cup was in 2015? So I said, do you want to win tickets? All you need to do is tell us when is the last time they won the Memorial Cup? Could this contest be any easier? I wish I could <laughs> try to win these awesome tickets. This is great hockey. So all you have to do is email your answer to Uxbridge Scugog Life at rci.rogers.com. That is Oxford Scugog Life at rci.rogers.com. Just tell us the last year that they won the Memorial Cup. I hope you win. We'll be back next week with more Oxford Scugog Life. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. <clears throat> you must be the reporter. Come with me. So, Miss McGill. How does it feel being Canada's famous women engineer? The real story is the work we've done retooling this factory. To build the Hawker Hurricane. Indeed. 40 planes last month with a capacity of up to 100. Our fighters are over England as we speak. Of course, it pains me to see airplanes mass produced like box cars or baby carriages. But in war, we make concessions in favor of innovation. You must feel at home, though, managing all of these women. I'm not here to manage women. Well, you must admit.